Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, to subscribe, like, and share our content with your network. All right. So, you know, when you go to the mailbox and you're minding your own business, expecting that $10,000 check, usually from Publishers Clearinghouse, but instead you end up with all these little flyer type things, little mailers advertising everything from rug cleaning to soccer practice. Where does that stuff come from and who sends it out? Well, today, have I got somebody who's going to tell us everything we need to know about direct mailing. Y'all, please say hello to Mr. Adam Van Wy. Hi, Adam. How are you? Hi, I'm great, Ricky. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me, Adam, because this is something very few people even think about is direct mailing and where those little flyer things that we use for everything else than what they're for, where they actually come from. So can you tell us a little bit about you and your company? I would appreciate it. Absolutely. I want to give you a very quick story because your introduction made me think of this. When I first got into this business, which will be 30 years in March, I, uh, I remember attending a high school reunion and it was one of the earlier ones. So we're all not quite sure what one another does for a living. And we're, we're going around the room and giving out those answers. And then someone were to say, oh, so you're the person that's responsible for all the junk mail I get. And I decided I was going to turn that into a very positive thing. So whenever I attend a networking event or something to that effect, I'll tell people, Yes, I'm the one solely responsible for all of the junk mail that you receive. So you've got me to blame for this. There, so now we know. We're going to get all of your information and we're going to start sending it back. Yeah, that, oh, <laughs> look what I've stepped into. <laughs> exactly. So how did you get into direct mailing? And the name of your company, of course, is Mailing Lists Incorporated. So how did you get into this? And I mean, because... Is there a school for direct junk mail? I, I don't get it. How did you start? You know, it's interesting. That's a great question. You know, nowadays you you can get degrees and certificates in direct marketing. There's all kinds of level of sophistication of courses and such. Back when I was a student and I, I received an MBA from uh, George Washington University, shout out to them. No in problem marketing. there, shameless plug. And, 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 and back then, I I don't even recall like direct marketing. It, it was it was other facets of, of, of marketing. So in any event, um, I got into it. I had a background, a little bit in sports marketing, a little bit in advertising agency and graphic design work. And through that experience, I had some uh, uh, exposure to being on the buyer side. And okay. so we would purchase lists for our customers. And when I decided I wanted to go do my own thing, I, I'm not somebody who can graphic design anything. And uh, I knew that wasn't going to be the right avenue. But I always kind of like this list thing, you, you know, the, the numbers and, you know, how much do we have to sell to make this profitable and so forth. And that all made a lot of sense to me. So that's kind of how I found myself getting into it. Uh, I, I mean, it's just so interesting because it's something that you never really think of. This is somebody's job or somebody's business to actually send out this marketing. And notice I'm using the right word, marketing materials, because junk mail just sounds so rude. So this marketing material, where do your clients and customers come from, Adam? Oh, gosh, all all walks of life. You know, we have worked with Fortune 100 companies. We have worked with national nonprofits and associations all the way down the line to small, local, independently owned and operated businesses, because really this is a discipline that any business that's looking to attract new customers 
really ought to consider and should be able to afford. Um, and the reason I say that is because it's a very scalable discipline. Um, the Fortune 100 company might be able to afford to send out 500,000 pieces of mail, oh. but the small company should be able to afford sending out 2,000 pieces. And either way, we can help that customer uh, mm -hmm. because we we don't basically say, hey, we only are going to work with lists that are at least 100,000. We don't operate that way. We work with plenty of small businesses because they really are the backbone of this country and uh, have helped many of them become medium-sized businesses, which is very, very gratifying. And and I bet that is, you said that small businesses should be able to afford it, but you also said about these lists. We're going to talk about two of these things separately. So first of all, where do these lists come from? And can anybody get them? Or do you have to be like, like you are a distributor, if you will, of, of these lists? How does that work? Well, of course, everybody should come to me to get that. Well, I'm yeah, because you're the only one in the business. I mean, really. <laughs> but the, no, the truth of the matter is uh, you, you could get them on your own if you were so inclined. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the nice things about our business is we receive commissions on the part of list owners when we place orders with them. So very often our, we will tell our clients it's not costing you anything additionally to work with me as opposed to if you were doing it yourself. So you might as well take advantage of our expertise and our knowledge of, of certain industries and certain um, facets of the business. Okay. Um, where lists come from? Wow, where do we begin? Um, <laughs> so I'll break it down this way. There's really two types of lists. And they are referred to as compiled lists and response lists. So with a compiled list, it's very much like it sounds. Mm -hmm. um, there is a directory filled with information. And somebody takes that information and they put it into a database. And voila, you've got yourself a, a list. Mm -hmm. um, more to the point, you have certain companies, much larger than mine, who are list compilers, and their job is to get as much information about as many people or as many businesses as possible. So that gets done in an exhaustive manner, which involves everything from looking at every phone book, phone directory in the country, to actually telephone verifying information, to getting information via the internet. There's all kinds of things that go into putting together a compiled file. So that is a common way that it's done. The other is a response list. And that sounds very much like it sounds. So in order to be on a response list, you've responded to mm -hmm. something in order to be on that list. So okay. you could be a magazine subscriber or you could be a seminar attendee, or you could have purchased a product and filled out a product warranty card, or you've gone on the internet, you've registered for something. And as part of that process, you've given information about yourself. Right. Um, the, unless you've specifically said, don't share my information, which more and more people do, and they have the right to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, that information is going to find its way to a database. Let me also say one thing about this, because I know that there's going to be some people in our audience today sure. who just, they hate all this. They, mm -hmm. you know, the privacy issues. And, exactly. You know, why is my name being given out? <laughs> I, I believe I've heard every one of them. Right. Here's my comment to that. There is a greater good to what we do. Okay. Okay. Think, think of it in these terms. You're a company, you have a product or service, you want to be able to market it to mm -hmm. an audience who's going to be most likely to purchase. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, without what we do, mm -hmm. that company would more or less just go after everybody. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. They would just send it, they wouldn't know who's who. They would just say, we'll just throw it all out against the wall and see what sticks. 
sucks. Yeah. That's what would happen. <laughs> what we do is very much the polar opposite of that. Okay. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take this great big world and we're trying to shrink it down mm. to a group of people that are going to be the most likely prospects for what someone is offering. So when you think of it in those terms, that's why I say there's a greater good to what we do, because okay. if I am a baseball card enthusiast, mm. I would like to get a notice when the next baseball card show is going to be in my local area, mm -hmm. okay? But if I weren't an enthusiast like that, then I would have no interest in this. And that's right. kind of, you know, what we do. So you kind of narrow it down to make sure that the people that want it get it. I like exactly. it. The second part of that, though, is the cost of a thing. So like you said, small companies, small businesses should be able to afford the lists and the mailings. Now, as a small business owner myself, I looked into this and I made some phone calls. You and I had chatted before about mm -hmm. what I had run into, made some phone calls just to see what was going on. And with what I was interested in doing, they told me it was going to be between ten and fifteen thousand dollars to send out the mailers. And needless to say, I scratched them off the list and just kept it moving. What what would be a decent cost that you would consider decent for a small business and how many pieces of mail would that be? Great question. And, and, and again, what we do is also not limited to mail. So okay. Yeah, we're going to talk those, about that too. Yeah. yeah. Let's think of it also in, 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 in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, we can provide phone numbers if companies want to call instead of mail or call in addition to mail. Then there's also email addresses, which can be made available. So there's a variety of different ways to, to, to go about uh, marketing. And all of this, when you combine it, is what's referred to as multi-channel marketing. And that's really the ability to hit your prospect multiple times, multiple different ways, so that there is that reminder effect. When somebody sees something a second or third time and they say, that looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? And that's instrumental towards trying to get somebody to ultimately make that purchase. Mm -hmm. So let me go back to your question. Um, from a pricing standpoint for direct mail, um, we're, the, we're the easy people. When I say we, the list people, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the ones at the top of the chain are the beloved U.S. Postal Service. Uh, because po <laughs> postage is almost always going to be your biggest single line item mm -hmm. in a campaign. And right. I I've got mixed feelings about the postal service. I think for many, many years, they were an understated, undervalued asset. They mm -hmm. were the greatest deal going. And I really think over the last 15 years or so, they've made up for lost time. Um, <laughs> there have been annual increases this year. There uh, were two increases. Uh, a uh, second increase I know. Just took place in the beginning of July. So um, there's nothing we can do about that, except we can be smart mm -hmm. about uh, taking advantage of their discounts. M mailing what we all used to call bulk rate is now called standard mail. Uh, you can save a tremendous amount in postage by mailing at that level of class. They also have programs. For example, there's something called informed delivery, which is really a cool thing that they're doing. It, it, it allows the person who's going to receive your mailing to right. get a digital representation of that oh the morning of the day that the mail is going to arrive. So just imagine you, you're going through your email and you see this piece that's going to arrive in your mailbox later in that day. Again, yeah. you're hitting them two different times, two different ways. So it's a very attractive thing that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, they're offering discounts on postage anywhere from two to four cents per piece, mm -hmm. um, which is, I think, available through the end of this year. So, you, you know, there are things to know in which you can minimize your costs or at least reduce them mm -hmm. more than they otherwise would be. So. That's After neat. postage, you have printing costs and so forth. Um, 
As far as what lists cost, there are a lot of variables that do enter into that, mm -hmm. um, starting with, you know, are we talking consumers or businesses? Are we talking one-time use, or multiple use? There's a, a quantity of names enters into it. So um, it, it, yeah, it can run the gamut. And we've sold lists for as little as a penny a name. And mm -hmm. we've sold lists upwards of 50 cents a name. It all really depends upon a number of these variables. You buy a list. The list is yours, right? It is yours to have and to hold forever. No. And I'll tell you why. Boo! Yeah. Wait a minute. So I'm going to pay you for something and I don't get to keep it. So I beg your pardon. Yeah. <laughs> don't mean to offend. <laughs> the, um, the way that list transactions work, typically, mm -hmm. is you are either renting a list for a one-time use, oh. or you can license a list for one year's unlimited use. Hmm. Now, let me tell you what happens after a year. Please do. I'm already shocked that I have to pay for it and give it back. Continue. Okay. After a year, let's say you're mailing to households. Okay. Okay. 22% of them will have changed addresses True. over the course of a year. Okay. So if you want to keep mailing to that list after a year, mm. you're going to have to be prepared to waste postage on about one out of every five pieces. That is so true. And that's mm. not a good deal for you. <laughs> So the okay. one year unlimited use makes sense for a, a few reasons. One, if you know you're going to want to use the list multiple times, it's an attractive price point to do that as opposed to keep renting a list over and over and over again for one time use. But secondly, it's really for the, it behooves the end user to mm -hmm. not waste so much in postage and printing by mm -hmm. mailing to a very stale. I, I like it. So now for those of us who check our mail once a month, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, <laughs> what about email? Can we do the same thing there or how are we looking there? So email addresses uh, are, are, are fascinating. Um, <laughs> a lot of people see email as being a great, great panacea. Um mm -hmm largely because they don't have to spend money on postage. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so, so there's a much lesser cost involved. And so we handle email a number of different ways. And very often it boils down to the entity that we're working with in terms of procuring that email list. For oh, example, I see. Let's mm -hmm. go back to those response lists we talked about where somebody mm -hmm. responded to be on a list. Um, very often those email addresses will never, ever be released to an end user. So instead, they have a third party mm -hmm. who takes your creative, your content, right. and they will deploy to the email list. Okay. And then they will provide a tracking report that indicates the number of people that opened the email, the numbers of people who clicked on the email, and mm -hmm. the proof is very much in the pudding because when somebody clicks on your email, mm -hmm. they're going to be routed to your landing page or to your website, whatever you've set up so that that's mm -hmm. where that person goes. So you're going to be able to tell from the traffic in your website here's okay. how many people were able to click on this link and come to us today. So the reports are very, very valid as a result. That is so good to know because you're not, like you said, no end user will get the email address list. That right there to me is already kind of cool. That, that Yeah, again, that is under one category. We also have situations, though, mm -hmm. where we can license email to customers and we can actually let them possess the email addresses. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some tricks of the trade to know about this, a couple of the very popular deployment platforms, such as Constant Contact and MailChimp, mm -hmm. they do not allow you to use their platform for emailing a rented or a licensed list. So uh -huh. you have to find another platform or some other third party 
right. uh, to do the deployment for you. Interesting. Um, so there are ways around it, but it's a little bit uh, murkier than if you were just having somebody do it from the get go. There is so much information here. So Adam, let me ask you, if somebody said, I want to buy a list, I don't know where to go, and they're looking up different areas and things, what should a consumer look for in a mailing list company? Well, that's a great question. I, I You know, you just added the word company, which makes it two different answers. I thought you were wow, going to say, okay. what should they be looking for in a mailing list? Okay. okay. I, I want, well, maybe there's I, both. I mean, I'm going to answer it both ways. Cause okay, I, let's I, do it. I, I think it's two sets of answers. I really do. Okay. Okay. So if you were shopping for your own mailing list, what you would want to know mm -hmm. is tell me a little bit about how these names are generated. How, how, how does a name make it onto a list? Okay. How often do you clean your list? Okay. Um, and the fact of the matter is there are some compile lists that maybe clean it once a year okay. and try and stay away from those. Okay. There are others that um, clean pretty regularly once a month. We mm -hmm. like those very much because okay. it just moves the customer. They're going to get more delivered. So um, cleaning, updating, those kinds of questions, uh, mm -hmm. those are kinds of things I would want to know. And I would also want to know what kind of deal can I have? So in other words, if I decide maybe I want to do 25,000 as opposed to 10,000, are you going to give me a better price? More mm. often than not, the answer may very well be yes. So it's worth, it's worth having that discussion and finding out. Now, your other question, or maybe it was your original question, was <laughs> a mailing list company, okay? And I can speak well to that because I run one. Right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Essentially, what I would want to know is how long have you been doing this? Mm -hmm. What industries do you do it for? So where is your mm -hmm. expertise and understanding the marketplace and what lists are available within that marketplace? Um, how would our, I mean the customer, how would our account be serviced? Uh, do you handle it? Does someone else handle it? Um, do you guys get back to us quickly or do we have to wait a day or more to hear back from you? Mm -hmm. um, th those kinds of things. A lot of them are, are customer service type things. The fact of the matter is any, any company in this business has access to the same data. Okay. okay? We, mm -hmm. all, we all have the ability to, to access the same list. So okay. really what it's going to boil down to is what's up here, our thinking, okay? How can we come up with something that's gonna really make this special? Mm -hmm. And how attentive are we towards our customers? Do we get back to them quickly? Are we friendly? Do we, um, yeah. you the know- The usual do, customer do, service things. Absolutely. It's yeah. A big, it's a big, big part of it. And yeah, 100%. Uh, it's one of those things where everyone can say it, but- <laughs> The fact of the matter is you have to demonstrate it day in and day out. Walk the walk, huh? Absolutely. Don't just talk the talk. Wow. Adam, this is so much bigger than I even knew. And even bigger, I'm sure, than our viewers knew as well. So, Adam, if somebody had more questions or just wanted to talk to you, since you're the only list guy in the business, where can they <laughs> reach you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you got that right, but, uh, but uh, I'm going to follow up on that anyway. So I think the best way to reach me is by email. And it's a little lengthy, but I'll sound it out. It's Adam, A-D-A-M, at Mailing Lists, Inc. So mm -hmm. lists is plural. And then that's followed by I-N-C dot okay. com. Perfect. Don't worry, y'all. If you did not get that email address, all of Adam's contact information will be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, like, subscribe, and share us with your network. Adam, my friend, before I let you go, we have to play a game. <laughs> well, time for me to get nervous. <laughs> no need. It's not that hard. So the game is called This or That. I'm going to give you the choice of two or three things, depending on the question. And you just tell me which one you like the best. See, it's not hard. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. I just want to go on record, though, with saying this has not been rehearsed. 
<laughs> exactly what makes it fun. All right, let's do this. Grits or oatmeal? Oatmeal. Yellow light, slow down or speed up? I'm sorry, speed up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Romantic comedy or action adventure? Romantic comedy. Airplane, window seat or aisle seat? <laughs> Whichever one my wife's not in the mood for that day. <laughs> Uh, but if it were up to me, window seat. <laughs> okay, if you had a choice, I like yes. it. Do it yourself or hire a professional? Oh, if only I could do it myself. It, it has to be hire a professional. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. House slippers or bare feet? <sighs> bare feet. Exercise or extra fries? <laughs> which, which do I like better? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's French fries. <laughs> I'm down with it. Extra fries it is. Michael Jackson or Prince? Oh, I love that question. Michael Jackson. That's interesting. By, not, I don't know. Not, not I, I kind of see though. you as a Prince guy. I don't know. Not by much. Not by okay. much. All right. I'm going to let it slide then. Reality TV. Yes, please. Or I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Me too. I can't do it. Ugh. The Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, the game or the commercials? Game. Ah, who's your team? Uh, really have two, but in order. Number one is the New York Jets. Okay. And the number two is the Washington, whatever they're going to change. Whatever they are this week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Poor Washington. But they got a new owner. Let's see how that plays out. Yes, and indeed. finally, what would you tell your 13-year-old self? Great question. Uh, be bold, take chances, don't be afraid to fail. And when you fail, make sure you learn something from it. I like it. Gosh, if somebody had told me that. Oh, well, moving on. Adam, thank you so much for joining me. This has been uh, so much fun. Ricky, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And don't worry, you all, there'll be, that's it for this time, but we'll be back again next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. <laughs>